Good morning. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to Double Portion Kingdom Ministry, uh, an online community of believers. We're coming to you live this Sunday morning from on location uh, somewhere in Houston, Texas at a park, wherever. But, you know, Double Portion Kingdom Ministry is an awesome thing is we're an online community of believers. So we can be anywhere, but we all have one thing in common. We all love God and we're trying to walk in our kingdom purpose. So get ready, get ready for a uh, uh, word from God. Get ready for some praise and worship. Get ready for a uh, devotional. And let's see what the Lord has to say on Double Portion an uh, online community of believers on this beautiful Sunday morning. We cry out 
miracles can happen here. They'll happen in here. Yeah. Yeah, Father, we're ready for miracles. Signs and wonders, miracles. Yeah. We're not only looking for miracles, we're looking for breakthrough, breakthrough. Yeah. Chains will be falling, chains will come off. We're looking for breakthrough. Yeah. Something good, yeah. Yeah. We're looking for something good to happen. We know it's going to happen again. Something good. to come on through, yes, breakthrough, breakthrough, yeah, breakthrough, yeah, anything can happen in here, in here, in here, in here, anything can, anything can happen in here, we're expecting a move from you, God, in here, right where I am. looking for miracles. We're looking for signs, cause anything can happen in here. Anything can happen in here. Oh, you look like you're open for it. You look like you're ready for it. Miracles break through. Something good can happen in here and prepare to receive it through none other than God's vessel, our amazing pastor, the Pastor John K. Jenkins, Sr. Give the Lord a shout this morning, everybody. Give God a shout. He's worthy to be praised. Give the Lord a shout this morning. Tell your neighbor, anything is likely to happen up in here today. I've seen God do the spectacular. I've watched him perform miracles. And I believe down in my soul that God is able, willing, and capable of doing whatever you stand in the need of. And I'm willing to give him praise ahead of time. Amen. You can be seated for just a moment. I'm going to have you stand back up in a minute. Anything can happen in here, in here, in here. Anything can happen. Yes, anything can happen. It can happen in here. Yeah, breakthrough, breakthrough can happen in here. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Oh, breakthroughs can happen in here. Yeah. Oh, miracles can happen in here. Miracles, signs, and wonders. We're ready to receive it. Yes, miracles can happen in here. Yeah. We're looking for a miracle. That's right. Anything can happen in here.
in my life, in your life, wherever you are, anything can happen in here. Well, welcome once again to the Double Portion Kingdom Ministries community of believers. We are yet on location in Lavernia, Texas. Look, we are representing LaShawn. LaShawn Dothard had her conference on yesterday. It is the It was the Infusion Kingdom Conference. It's a family affair. We were empowered to impact the kingdom. And we're still here coming to you live on location. God is speaking. Even let me, let me, let me go into my screen share and share this piece from yesterday. History was made. Families were impacted. Thank you, LaShawn. When we've been praying for this for months and yesterday was the culmination, the manifestation, and God got the glory. All families were impacted. So God, I thank you. I pray over all of the presenters and every word that came forth on yesterday, especially the youth and the children that share, shared in song. They shared a skit. They were there in the room. They received this kingdom impartation to carry the torch. Yes, God, carry the torch of the kingdom into the next generation. God infused his people on yesterday. And we are just excited on this morning to say thank you, LaShawn, for allowing us to be a part of what it is that you are doing for the kingdom. You are evidence of this online community of believers. We're all over the place. We're attached. We're doing what God has called us to do. And let me tell you, Double Portion, you are in for a treat on this morning. I promise you, I'm not just this just, you know, talking to be talking. You are in for a treat on this morning. We have a rhema word straight from the, the annals of heaven. Holy Spirit woke me up out of my sleep this morning at right after midnight. So y'all know the scripture at midnight. God gave me this word. He shifted what we were going to share on this morning. Pastor Don is here with me before he has to fly back. I, actually, he's going to be in Houston with me this week. So we are here. But this word right here, let me just go into the screen share. And you know, when you have a rhema word, when you have a hot off the presses word, some fresh bread from heaven, this is manna. As I hear, I hear Malcolm Burton, this is manna. This is fresh bread. This is hot bread. But not only that, this is the Proverbs 31, 15 style of word. In Proverbs 31, 15, that's where a portion was birthed. That she rises while it's yet night. So while Pastor Don was recovering from this hundred and something degree weather we were in on yesterday, Holy Spirit woke me up and gave me this word. 3115 of Proverbs, it says that she rises while it's yet night, prepares meat for her household and portions for her servant. So this is fresh bread, but it's also meat. It's going to be some strong meat up in this word that God is saying for us. So our title for today. We're going to look at two scriptures. We will be looking at two scriptures on this morning. But the title is, I've learned to rest in Jesus. Repeat, repeat. I've learned to rest in Jesus. Where are you resting? Where do you turn to? And what have you learned about Jesus? And is it proof? We have six points. He gave this to me, made this slideshow sitting in the bed. A few hours ago, this is rhema word. You know, to some people who are saying it feels like it, you want the uh, in-person, this is as in-person as it gets. We are this morning, this morning on July the 23rd, getting this rhema word. So if you will turn with me to Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11, we're going to look at verse 28 through 30 here in our opening. It is Matthew 28. Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30. It says, come, and this is the red letter. This is the hot sauce. This is Jesus speaking, and he's speaking some good stuff. We'll, we'll put it in context in a moment. He says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. He says, come on to me, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am meek, I am lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You know, renewal of the mind. Yes, you'll find rest for your souls. 
for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And for those that are looking at this, do you see what I've highlighted here? He says, I will give you rest. Learn from me. Find rest for your souls. That gives us point number one on this morning. Point number one is that I am a disciple. I am a learner of Christ. Remember, we're a community, we're an online community of believers. Another word for believer is a disciple. I'd rather call myself a believer or a disciple because that believers believe. And what is it that I believe and what am I being disciple? I am learning of Jesus as he said in his word. So what we will do now is we are going to put this the, these few verses, verse 28 through 30, back into context while you're there in your Bible at Matthew chapter 11. If you scroll back up, verses 1 through 19 are about Jesus and John the baptizer. It's given us a little bit, a, a bit of a history lesson, and it's showing us the things that they had to overcome and that they conquered. And then when you get to verse 20 through 24, it shifts and it talks about how Jesus criticizes those unrepentant cities. Oh, now that's a rainbow word. Remember a few weeks ago, we said, don't be unbelieving believers. We are to be believers. We are to be disciples. Don't be unbelieving, you see, because Jesus criticized those that, that stuck in unrepentance. And so then his response at verse 25 through 30, he's inviting everyone to come. So let's pick it up at verse 25. Matthew 11, we're going to pick it up at verse 25 and put this in context. Now we've shifted to the Passion Translation, and I'll be interjecting. Y'all know I learned this, this Amplified. I love the Amplified. So here in verse 25, and so once he was talking, he dealt with the unrepentant, don't be unbelieving believers. And then he turned around and he was saying, but to everybody that wants to come, whether you are an unbelieving believer at the time he gave that word, or whether you're a believer and you, you, you're you heavy laden, he's telling us what to do. He exclaimed, Father, thank you for you are Lord. You are the supreme ruler over heaven and earth. And there's a rhema word right there. To those that were on generational identity last month, we talked about God, he created the heavens and the earth. The world was formed by the fallen being. Mm -hmm. So he is supreme ruler over the heaven and the earth. And then he's hidden the great revelation of your authority from those who are proud and think they are wise and you've unveiled it instead to little children. So we ought to be childlike in our belief toward God. When you try and get high and lofty and in a, a religious spirit, then it's hidden from you of what's really going on. So God is supreme ruler over the heaven and the earth. That's why we have to have revelation knowledge that comes from the heaven to the earth, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We have to have revel that type of revelation knowledge, not worldly knowledge, because what he's done is the great revelation of who he is and who he's called the believers to be is hidden from those who operate in worldly knowledge. I'm, I'm going to drive that on. And then he says at verse 26, yes, father, you've chosen this gracious plan to extend your kingdom. See, the plan to extend the kingdom is that we recognize who he is, that he's the supreme ruler over heaven and earth. We're created in his image and we remain childlike, yet we mature in spiritual understanding. This brings us to our point number two, that you need to learn of his authority, yet be childlike or yet remain childlike. We are to learn of his authority, yet remain childlike. Why do we do that? That scripture says, Father, thank you for you are Lord Supreme. So we need to recognize who he is. Learn, let, let's look at that point one more time. Learn of his authority, yet remain childlike. That was at verse 25. And then the next point is right there as well. Point number three, that we are to be extensions of the kingdom. How did you see that, Paulette? We are to be, extend when you learn of his authority and you remain childlike, but we are perfect sons of God, then it says he, he unveiled this secret to the children, be childlike, instead to little children, yet he's chosen this gracious plan to ex extend the kingdom. So we are to be extensions of the kingdom. Come on, this was a 
kingdom infusion. We were empowered to impact the kingdom. The word infusion means to be steeped in. It means to change the state of. We ought to be infused with the kingdom that when by, by learning of the Lord Jesus Christ, as I get to point six, it'll make a little more sense. But I know I see light bulbs going off in the spirit. This is compound revelation and abundant grace for us to know what God is saying to us. Keep reading. We're at verse 27 now. We're just putting those, those three. Those are, I have top five scriptures. One of my top fives is Matthew 11, 28 through 30. I've been Selah meditating in this for a while. Speaking of Selah, Juanita, you something else. We love you. Thank you for your support of, of uh, LaShawn here at this event. Love to see you. Always a blessing. Always a, pre a pleasure to labor with you as well. Keep going. We're at verse 27. You have entrusted me with all that you are and all that you have. This was Jesus speaking. So he's talking to the father and he's saying, father, you've entrusted me while I'm in the earth realm in the flesh with all that you are and all that you have. No one fully and intimately knows the son except the father and no one fully and intimately knows the father except the son. But the son is able to unveil that's he's able to reveal the father to anyone he chooses. So this was Jesus, he's speaking to God, but then he turns and he's speaking to the crowd, to the everyone's, to the anyone's, to the whosoever's. And he says, are you weary? Are you carrying a heavy load? Come to me and I will refresh your life. I am your oasis, is what Jesus is saying. I love the amplified, when it's saying that I am your oasis, I will ease, I will relieve, I will refresh your souls. That's what Jesus is saying. And that gives us point number four. We're going to review them all at the end. Point number four is that you are to be refreshed by the unveiled father and the oasis of Jesus. You are to be refreshed by the unveiled father. Jesus is unveiling him. He's revealing him unto us because Jesus is our oasis. He's the one that eases us, relieves us, and refreshes our soul as we learn of him. Mm -hmm. I've learned to rest. Point number four, keep reading. We're at verse 29. There's two more verses in this scripture and we'll flip to the end. It says, simply join your life with mine. So, uh, some versions say, take my yoke upon you. Mm -hmm. Learn my ways and you'll discover that I'm gentle. I'm humble, I'm easy to please, I'm tranquil, I'm peaceful is what some of the other versions says. And back up when it says simply join your life. Yes, yoke your life up with mine. Have union with the Lord Jesus Christ is what he's saying. He's telling us to come alongside him and then you will find refreshment and rest in life. I like the Amplifieds, it says, You'll find rest, you'll find relief and ease and refreshment and recreation and blessed quiet for your soul. Sometimes you have to quiet your soul and you do that by learning of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> verse 40, um, verse 30, for all that I require of you will be pleasant and it'll be easy to bear. Or the Amplified says, my yoke is wholesome, it's useful, it's good, it's not hard. It's not hard. It's not pressing. My yoke is comfortable. It's gracious. It is pleasant. And as we learn of him, we tap into point number five. We can learn from the example of David in Psalm 55, verse 22. If you are a passion reader, right there at verse 30 in the passion translation, it says to see Psalm 55, verse 22. And so we're going to put that 55, 22, look at that. And that'll give us our end. Psalm 55, verses one and two, one through three at the beginning. This is a psalm where David was going through some stuff and he had to really trust God. And so this is what the psalmist was saying. God, listen to my prayer. I don't hide, don't hide your heart from me when I cry out to you. Who are you crying out to? And what, how are you crying out? Are you whining, murmuring, and complaining? 
Or are you saying, God, I trust you in the midst of all that I'm going through. I'm coming unto you because the burden is getting heavy and the labor is getting laborious. I'm coming to you for rest. I cry out to you. Verse two, it says, come close to me and give me your answer. Here I am, I'm moaning, I'm restless, I'm preoccupied with the threats of my enemies and I'm crushed by the pressure of their oppression. Does anyone feel preoccupied by the threats of the enemy? The enemy may be the spirit of mammon, the bills, the toil for money, whatever the enemy is, the spirits that are operating behind people because your loved ones or that crazy coworker is not the problem, it's the spirits that are operating behind them. What do you do? Yes, God, I'm going through this. So he's acknowledging that. He said, they surround me with trouble and with terror. And in their fury, they rise up against me in an angry uproar. I'm going to stop reading what David is saying to God in verses three, all the way down to verse 22. Jump to verse 22. When it's all said and done, this is what he said. So here's what I've learned. Here's what I've learned through it all. Now, Matthew 11 says, learn of me. And here David is recounting what he's learned. Leave all your cares and anxieties at the feet of the Lord. That's what I've learned. That could be a point. Leave all your cares and anxieties at the feet of the Lord. The measureless hit and his measureless grace will strengthen you. Don't that sound like Matthew 11? That, that, that's a good. Then he will watch over his devoted lovers. See, so that's why you had to say, I am a disciple. I am a believer, or as the passion calls it, I am a devoted lover. He's never going to let me slip. He's not going to let me be overthrown. He will send all my enemies to the pit of destruction. Murderers, liars, and betrayers will face an untimely death. My life's hope and trust is in you, and you'll never fail to rescue me. Do you believe that? I mean, really believe that when you learn of him and his character that he created the heavens and the earth and even the spiritual forces that those rogue forces that are coming against us, they are a created being. But when we serve God, we have authority over them. And some of that authority, you handle that when you're going through. David was known as a man after God's own heart. David was known as a praiser, as a worshiper. Even on yesterday, that worship broke out like, wow, on yesterday, when you understand that, yes, I may be pressed. Yes, I may be going through. But yes, I will yet praise God. You have to learn to praise God in the good times and the bad times. Sometimes the good times jack us up because all we want to do is, is, is well in the good. God help us. So that gives us point number six. Point number six is that we are to hope and trust in Elohim, in the triune God. They said, let us make man in our image. We are created in his image. My hope and my trust is in you. No matter what's going on around me, my hope and my trust is in you. So by way of review, let's look at those six points. Point number one, I am a disciple. I am a learner of Christ. Point number two, we need to learn of his authority, yet we need to remain childlike. I need to be childlike in my belief that God of his supreme being, but then I need to mature as sons of God so that I can operate in the same authority. I need to mature in my understanding of authority. I receive access to authority childlike, but I mature in my capacity to operate in it so that I can be number three. I can be extensions of the kingdom because I am kingdom ready for such a time as this. And I have been infused and empowered to impact the kingdom on this day called today. And then number four, I'm being refreshed by the unveiled father and the oasis of Jesus that he's causing me to have relief and ease. And then number five, I'm going to take the example of David in Psalm 55, 22, so that I can live in verse six. My hope and my trust is in Elohim and the triune God. This, this is what I've learned. I've learned to rest in Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for this word on today. We thank you for being in our midst. We thank you, God. I thank you that anyone that is on this line that is seeking you, that is wanting to know more of you, that you, oh God, have extended unto everyone to come unto you, 
to learn of you. Thank you for Double Portion Kingdom Ministries. We are a place where the teaching and the preaching of the word of God goes forward and people's lives are impacted and people's lives are changed as we are learning of the Lord Jesus Christ. What gospel are we preaching? We're not preaching another Jesus. We're preaching Jesus who came to, to the heaven, came from heaven to earth so that he could show us the way to salvation and back to the tree of life. Come on, that's in the mammon teaching where it's talking about that the, the cherubim was placed in the garden at the tree of life to guard the way back to it, not from it. He wasn't to keep us from it. He was to allow us to come back to it once we had tasted of the tree of life himself, Jesus Christ. That's another message. God, we thank you and we praise you for this word. If there's someone listening to this word on today and you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ or acknowledged him or become aware of his actions in your life, this is the time for you to confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. This is the time for you to confess him and, and receive access into this spirit realm. This is the time for you to receive with childlike faith access to Jesus, access to the hot sauce. We started this message in the red letters, the word of Jesus, the hot sauce of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is your opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus as your savior. This is the time to be aware of his, his hand that's been in your life all along, but you are unaware. Even as I said, we came, Jeremiah 1, 5 says, I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. Everybody's not may not be called to be a prophet, but everybody he knew before you were in the mother's womb and you knew him, he knew you. And so now when you came through the veil of the flesh, we lost our understanding of the spirit realm the way that we had it before. But now through acknowledging the Lord Jesus Christ and, and the help of the Holy Spirit and the help of the constitution of the kingdom, which is the word of God, we now have access to renew our mind back to when we had constant communion with God. God, this is the place. So if that's you, pray with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for being the savior of the whole world, but even of me. You're concerned about every single one of us, the whosoever's that will believe. So God, forgive me of my sin, my sin of forgetting that I was a spirit being created in your image and came into the earth for such a time as this. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that is my teacher that will lead me, guide me, instruct me, direct me, correct me in this journey in the earth realm. God, I thank you for this place of repentance, this place of rededication. Maybe you have known of him before, but like life has happened and you've been wearied and burdened. And this is the time for you to rededicate yourself afresh and anew all over again to Jesus, the savior of the world. If that's you and you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, rededicated your life, you want to know more about what it means to be a disciple of Christ, contact us here at Double Portion Kingdom Ministries. You can do so at our email address, which is x 7 at gmail.com. x 7 at gmail.com is our email. You can also send any praise reports, prayer requests to our email um, any biblical questions that you have, and we will definitely answer them. Make sure, everyone, that you've subscribed to our YouTube channel, Paulette X7, so you can receive notifications when the videos go live. And thank you to everyone who sows into Double Portion Kingdom Ministries. You can do so via Cash App at dollar sign Paulette X7. We have a few announcements, just a few more announcements besides that informational stuff. This Thursday night, this Thursday, July the 27th is the Flock of Men call, the Flock of Men Zoom and prayer call gathering. It was powerful. Pastor Don was able to see some of the men of Double Portion and speak with them. So definitely get the men on the line. The Kingdom Infusion, it wasn't at a church. It was in, at the uh, Lavernia City uh, Chamber of Commerce Hall because some people won't come into church, but they would come into a hall. Some people won't come into church, but they'll get online with the men. This is a live place for the men, the flock of men, according to Ezekiel 36, the last two verses, God is restoring a flock of men to the body. So get the men and all the men reminder, get on the call this Thursday night. 
And then the next generational identity will be on Thursday, August the 10th. It will be a continue, it will be a celebration of life. That's that's a birthday celebration for Paulette Denise. You know, I always like to give my gifts. I don't, I don't receive birthday gifts so much. I give gifts. And so join us on August the 10th. That's the next generational identity. And then if you haven't already, get ready for and save the date for the Identity Retreat 2024. We have some great things in store. Pastor Don and I are already making plans for this event. So you can join us at Jordan Ranch on May the 17th through the 19th, 2024. God is doing great things and we are a part of it. Let me tell you, something good is happening here. We open with First Baptist Church of Glen Arden worship. We're going to close with that worship again, pick up where we left off and let God bless us real good because something good is happening here, right here, wherever you are on this morning, listening to the playback or live, God has blessings and miracles. Miracle signs and wonders follow them that believe. This is why we decree and declare, I am a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's see what Pastor Don has to say as we go back and close out at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. One moment. Well, hallelujah and bless God. We hope that something was said this morning that could stir up the Holy Ghost in you so that you could continue to walk in kingdom responsibility walk in kingdom purpose and walk in favor and the blessings of the lord make it rich and add no sorrow may the lord bless you may the lord keep you may the lord make his face shine upon you may the lord lift his countenance upon you but most of all may the lord give you his shalom peace double portion the atmosphere for miracles is expectation I'm expecting God to do something spectacular beyond my beliefs. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. can happen in here, in here, in here. Just settle right there for a moment. Hallelujah. I'm trying to move on, but I keep hearing those words down in my soul that I'm expecting to see God do something spectacular. Somebody gonna get home and home gonna be fixed. Somebody gonna look in the mailbox and you're gonna see a check that you didn't expect to be there. Somebody's gonna go to the doctor, the doctor gonna say, what we saw before, we don't see anymore. Woo! Anything can happen in me.
worship Jesus. We worship Jesus. We bow down before you. We expect your miracle signs and wonders. We expect your miracle signs and wonders. We expect your miracle signs and wonders. Hey, cause you're a way maker. You're a promise keeper. Light in the midst of darkness. Yes, you are a way maker. You're a way maker. Way maker. Yeah, way maker. Something good is gonna happen. We're expecting something good to happen. Yeah, 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 something good. Something good, something good, something good. We're expecting something good to happen. Something good. Something good, something good. Something good. 